FullTiltPoker.net presents Learn from the Pros. We continue to learn from the pros presented by FullTiltPoker.net. Welcome back inside the FSN Poker Room. I'm your host, Chris Rose, joined as always by the Professor Howard Letterer. And today, our Fab Four, if you will. Four more poker Fab four. Pro Yeah, you like that, Jennifer Harmon. How are <laughs> <Fab> you? Fab Four. <laughs> no, you what about this guy? Well, he's just kind of part of the team. I'm the kind Howard. of okay fifth wheel. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, next to Jennifer, Phil Ivey has five uh, bracelets to his name. How you doing, buddy? Good to all see right, you again. All right. Chris Ferguson won the main event back in 2000. Good to see you again, sir. Pleasure to be here. And Lane Platt, five bracelets to his name. And How you doing, it. man? Good, great. All right. Well, today uh, we've been talking about bluffing, the keys to bluffing, how it gets done. Chris Ferguson, I, I'm curious, is there anything better than pulling off a great bluff in poker? I really think that is. That's a lot of the reason why people play poker is to pull off that big bluff. And that's, I think that's one of the things that separates poker than a lot, uh, from a lot of other games is your ability to bluff. I think one thing pe people love about it is that, you know, in most places, deception is frowned upon. But at the poker table, if you're, if you're very deceptive, you're a hero and, I mean, uh, and you're idolized. So I think that's... Uh, I'm gonna try I, I don't know if that's why that. they play, but that's why they keep coming back. It's like golf. You can shoot a lot of bad holes, but that one good shot keep you coming back. Well, you know, also there aren't too many games where, okay, like in basketball, right? You, like, make that fake no-look pass, or you fake the pass and then go in for the dunk. Everyone sees the deception. Well, in poker, you can bluff, and no one even knows it. Jen, I'm curious. Uh, is it easier for a woman to pull off a bluff? It actually is easier for a woman to bluff because they always think women have it and they're not capable of bluffing. But it's also men bluff a lot of women because it's uh, they think that they'll lay down hands and they think they can run over them. So that's what you, I mean. Yeah, you think you could run over a woman. That's why a lot of men think, you know. Well, I'm not even going to touch that one. See, I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't bluff that often. I'm willing to bet my bluffs, 90% of them I bluff probably with the best hand. You never, you don't know how often you're, you're bluffing that you don't have the best hand already in hand. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's... I know when I'm bluffing and I have the worst hand, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it is important that when you pull off a bluff that you actually bluff, I yeah. think. You know, I mean, if you're going to risk your money out there, you, you, you don't want to be in a situation where you risked all that money and you didn't even, like, gain anything. Yeah, you don't, you don't because if no one had bet, you would have won the pot anyway. Yeah, I think, I think a mistake some people make is they, they'll bet these medium-strength hands on the, on the river, and there's no point in betting a medium-strength hand on the river because you can just check that down, and if, if, you know, if, you, if your hand is good, you're going to win the pot anyway. And we talk about position a lot, and, you know, 95% of the time, it's better to be in later position than in earlier position. But like I've heard Gus Hansen talk, you know, very, you know, very cogently about the idea that when he's in first position, he feels like he's first to the bluff, and he feels like he's actually in position because he's the first one that can bet. Yeah, Sometimes sure. the first guy that bets wins the pot. The bottom line is, if you're playing against good players and you never bluff, you have no chance. You you have to bluff. It's it's a it's a very important part of your game. Yeah, you can rely and on the cards when, all, every day, you know, all day long. No, good players are going to pick up on You have to take those kind of chances. If you do bluff and you get caught, then you can actually think about what you did in the hand to like give off any kind of information so you can use it the next time and not do those same things to give off those kind of tells. Yeah, sometimes getting caught bluffing is even better than uh, getting away with the bluff. Really? You could benefit from it because you know they, they saw you bluff in this situation. You know now it's always going to be be on their mind. You know that, oh, he's capable of bluffing, so a lot of times you're going to get paid off in spots where they would never pay you off in a million years if you didn't bluff. Definitely the key is to remember what you've done against players in the past and use that to your advantage at all times, no matter whether it's a bluffer or, you know, not Because bluffing. players always come back to that same hand where that person did that to you, and you keep thinking about it over and over, and, you know... That image stays with you for a right. long time. Right. You I can mean, do a it, reversal. It's, it's that thing about that little bit of doubt. It's very hard to bluff someone when they have a little bit of doubt. And if you've been in a similar situation against somebody before and they saw you bluffing, what are the chances they're not going to have a little bit of doubt the next time and, and, and call you? And, of course, over the long run, if you can get caught bluffing once and then get paid off ten times. Right. That's why you see that's now. That's why you do that reversal. Thing. Hey, guys, before we do move on, who's the best bluffer at this table? I might be the best bluffer in the little, littler pots, you know, as far as, you know, taking small pots. Howard might be the best bluffer, like, as far as, like, you know, uh, setting people up and taking people off in, like, bigger hands, you know. And, and everybody has their own way of, of bluffing, you know. 
Lane might be a, a, he's, a he's he's probably the best at, at getting caught bluffing on small bluffs. No, <laughs> yeah. getting caught on small small bluffs and then not pulling off maybe the big bluff, but getting paid over and over and over again in the bigger pots. And that and and that's a successful bluff. Well, all I can hope and Jennifer's is that the best at sitting at the table and acting like she never bluffs. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I can hope, guys and young ladies, is that you all told the truth for the last few minutes. To learn, chat, and play with the pros, go where they live, fulltiltpoker.com.